Hi, and welcome everyone to our talk about practical challenges with port security admission. I'm Christian, I'm an engineer at VMware. I'm V, I'm a PM at VMware. Um, I had a lot of questions about whether there would be like any time travel, dinosaurs, etc. in this talk, but I'm sorry, it's just a talk. Uh, so we're gonna talk about, you know, like Christian said, practical challenges with port security admission. Um, my clicker just stopped working, one moment. It's DNS, never mind. <laughs> um, so before we start, I just want to get the TLDR because then you know what to pay attention to and what's interesting to you uh, in what we're going to discuss. So we're going to talk about pod security admission. It's kind of new, but not really. It's extremely new. Uh, it's a, a security feature that is meant to kind of replace pod security policies. Uh, we're going to talk about how it works. The main thing um, that we wanted to discuss, though, is that Pod security admission is quite simple to use. It's a very elegantly designed um, feature. The problem you're gonna encounter with pod security admission is everything, every workload in their dog needs privileges of some sort in order to work, like host privileges, network privileges, I don't know, privileges. And if you enable privileges to everything, thereby bypassing pod security admission, then that defeats the point of the feature. So if you put privileges to everything, all hell breaks loose, we're gonna try to discuss how to and how break looseify uh, your setup so that you can enjoy the advantages uh, of this great functionality. So before we start, let's take a look at what we have. So we will do first a recap about the whole PSA thing, then enter to main challenges and pitfalls, get into some action, and finally, cover some guidelines which help you and at the day-to-day -day base. Yeah, so let's do a quick recap of what pod security, uh, what pod security admission is and how it works. Um, basically, you are going to have three distinct security profiles, restricted, baseline, and privileged. They restrict certain capabilities that we're gonna discuss. Uh, and another axis of control that you have is how you, what do you do about the security profiles? So you have audit mode, warn mode, and enforce mode. Um, so when we talk about the security profiles, uh, we need to see what is it that we are restricting or allowing in the first place. Yeah, so there's a, there are lots of capabilities at the pod spec you could take a look at to secure your containers. It's settings about app armor, host namespaces, host path volumes, capabilities or privileges. Yeah, so one thing that's funny um, and I totally missed, forgot the joke here. There's a capability called capabilities. I didn't know this and I found it was hilarious. So I'm certain there's like two of you with the same kind of humor as me. Uh, isn't this funny? Um, <laughs> another funny thing that is not so funny because it's confusing is we have the word, the keyword privilege being used in two different settings that mean two different things and you're gonna work them together and that's not confusing at all. It's as, as simple as enabling the capability capability when you want a capability inside your capabilities. So um, you have privileged as a pod security profile, you have privileged as a setting in your pod spec and that relates to like the Linux configurations. So when you're talking to your developers in your team, do you need this to be privileged? Make sure you know what kind of privilege you're talking about. Because as Christian can tell, sometimes you're having that conversation, you think you're getting along and you're talking about two completely different things. Yeah, because if you just use one single host path, you're, you enter already the privilege profile and, not any, not, and you are not using the privilege Boolean here. Yeah, so the, the Boolean that we're looking at is one thing, the security profile, another thing, just wanted to make that uh, very clear. Okay, so Christian, I, I kind of looked at the capabilities. I know like which, like, okay, I need the, this capability, so I need a baseline profile, et cetera. Yeah. Once I decide that, what do I do? Yeah, let's look at the less confusing names. The, there are the three modes, the audit mode, which as it says, creates audit log messages. There's also the warn mode, which returns warnings about the configured policy in, when you use kubectl or any other client to apply things. They basically cover the same information, but through different channels of information. Uh, so you get the same message in a different place. Yeah, exactly. Um, and last but not least, if the force is with, is with you, you can start doing enforcement and block um, pods from getting run or created, um, which do not comply to your wanted security pro profile. 
Yeah, so we have two modes that show you information but don't really do or limit or restrict anything, and then you have a mode that actually stops things from happening, which is, you know, security admission, as, the, as it says on the tin. So in the end, we're dealing with three settings and three settings. It's a simple system, uh, kind of, uh, and there, you can apply uh, one of those three and one of those three to yeah, either on a per namespace space, or you can also set it cluster widely. But be aware, um, the namespace space setting has more priority than the cluster wide. But this allows you to enforce cluster wide, a less restrictive setting, and have a single namespace which runs your single uh, privilege uh, workload. Yeah. So this, the 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 TLDR, I guess, is that it's a very broad configuration. It's not very detailed at all. It's not meant to be. It's meant to be simple. Uh, when you need extremely specific control over very specific things, then you're going to want to use one of those other tools, Gatekeeper and uh, Pod Security Admission. They complement each other, for example. They work great together. Uh, so that's something you might want to do. Um, so here's an example. When you're applying uh, Pod Security Admission to a namespace, you simply apply the labels as they're there. And, and when enforcing cluster wide, you have this configuration file used at a Kubernetes API server where you can set the very same settings. There's always two settings per mode. The first one is the, the profiles we use for the mode, like here, enforce privileged. And the second one would be the version to define. Yeah. And you're the engineer here. There's, is this quite right? Yeah, I think there might be something wrong. Um, folks, take a look. Maybe you, you guess what it is. We come to back later. Yeah, we're going to show you. If you guess right what's wrong here, you get free coffee at the end of the talk at the free coffee booths. We're happy to join. We're happy to join, exactly. All right, so now let's, uh, we, we got an overview of like what the feature does. So let's talk a bit. And like at this point, you need to think like if you're implementing this from scratch, from a new thing that you're developing right now, you're free to take a nap. We're not going to be offended, just a little bit sad, but you're free to take a nap. Um, and wake up at the last section of the talk, and then we're just going to tell, here are the guidelines to develop stuff from scratch using PSA. That's not necessarily a problem. The problem is most of us are not working on brand new uh, applications. We have a ton of stuff running, a billion services here and there, et cetera. And even though PSA is quite simple by nature, when you apply that to a large, complex system that you already have, things are inevitably going to come up that you need to think about. So we're going to talk about the main challenges and pitfalls for that. So. To adopt pod security admission, you can basically go to three steps. The first step would be pick the right profile for the workload you're currently running, and afterwards start optimizing and reducing the security profile to a better one, or improving it to a better one. And the third step would be add continuity by um, taking care that you don't run into security issues in the future with regards to the settings. So let's start with the the theory first. Um, step one, pick the right profile. Um, so the, there's a rule of the thumb where you can say, if you have host namespaces in use, if your workload requires privileged or any administrative capabilities, host path volumes, or any other things. Capability capabilities. Yeah, there are lots of capabilities. Um, then you probably need the privileged profile for now for this workload. Yeah, so in the beginning, when we are starting to implement pod security, um, we're going to have a lot of stuff with a lot of privileges because we want to get everything up and running. And as we're going to discuss in a minute, if you try to make something run with less privileges than it needs, you're going to end up in bigger problems than if you give it broader privileges at first, you get it running, and then you can start curtailing those privileges so that they are not just every, everything can do at whatever they want. So privilege profile basically means this workload can do whatever it wants. There are no restrictions. Baseline is like a, a set of settings uh, that is like generally considered by the community to be like, okay, these are the things that cause problems, so these are like a good baseline to restrict those. Uh, and then restricted setting is a, a different thing. The thing is that to apply baseline, you need to be conformant already with this entire list of settings. Uh, which, when you're just trying to get the whole system to work, you don't want to do that. You first want to get things to run, and then you're, you start to, to optimize. Um, and I think this is what I just said. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, all right, so what happens, why did we say give privileges first and then remove them? Because if you don't give privileges to a thing that does need privileges, uh, a lot of weird stuff's going to happen. 
yeah, like if we just start enforcing the restricted profile, there will be for sure pods which don't get even created anymore. So that's a good thing because the, the admission um, works and actually blocks our workload and we get notified because um, it doesn't get run. So yeah, so the, the admission controller is, you know, controlling admission, so that's a good thing. But that's only when it works as intended. Yeah, so there's another case like there are things, we, we remove capabilities, but the workload may need, the, may, may need them and the pod just starts to crash loop. But the good thing here is we hopefully have monitoring to also cover that and get notified there too. And that's the last scenario where the pod may even get running and yeah, okay, it doesn't get ready and get, doesn't get served any traffic, so others may hopefully cover that. But the very last thing is the pod gets running, it also gets ready, so should be good, right? Yeah, I think everybody knows this guy at work. Um, you, look, you look at them and it's like, looks like they're working, they tell you they're ready, everything's fine, zero work gets done at all. That's our employee of the month. Uh, and that's the type of pod or situation here that you need to be concerned with, because this one's gonna be hard to track. Yeah, maybe that, that one joins us for coffee later. Yeah. So um, these are, there are the must set settings which you need to set that um, at the pod specification um, because the default settings may be insecure or not when you set nothing, it will default to insecure defaults. So to get down to the restricted or baseline profile, we have to take a look at them, which were the list we had in a screenshot before, for example, and set the more secure settings there to comply with the better profile. Yeah, so just to get back to the larger structure we were discussing, in the beginning you give things more privileges so that they can run, then you start to address the settings to optimize things. So there's a bunch of settings in your, uh, in your spec that you need to, basically the defaults are not secure enough, so they're not gonna be compliant with more advanced security. Uh, so you need to remove capabilities explicitly because the defaults are just not secure enough. So here are some of those settings. Yeah, that's for, for example, the runner's non-root boolean, which says, or which tells the kubelet to block any pods or process to getting run, which is running as root. Um, be aware, if you just set that boolean, your pod may not start because the user ID in the Docker file um, may still be the root user, so the kubelet will check that and block it from getting run. Yeah, another setting that's pretty straightforward is SACCOM profile. Uh, this is a requirement by the, the more uh, strict uh, pod security admission profiles, uh, so it's something you need to set as well. And yeah, finally, there's the allow privilege escalation Boolean, for example, at a container security context, and again, the capability to drop capabilities so we have less capabilities in your pod. Yeah, exactly. Now, we just talked about removing privileges, and generally that's great because generally things have more privileges than they should, and you want to remove them uh, as much as possible. So what do you do if a workload actually does need privileges to work, as is the case for any host things, or file things, or you know, syscalls, et cetera? You set the whole thing to privilege? So I have an idea. We could just set it to privileged and I can go home now, right? Okay, perfect. Meet you at coffee. Now, here's what you do. Um, let's say um, you have an, a service, an application, whatever it is. It, you know it needs privileges to work because it requires some of those capabilities we described. Uh, the first instinct is going to be PSA work by namespace. I'm going to set the whole namespace to privileged. That will work. That's what I just told you. You should do that at first so that things run, but you should not stop there. Here's an example of what you can do. You can break the application into two. You have one namespace with privileges, one namespace without privilege. You reduce the surface area of things that can go terribly wrong by a good chunk. You don't have to stop here either. So if you're okay from PSA side, there may be still containers in a pod which requires part uh, privileges for one container, but the single container there, for example, could still get reduced in privileges and run more secure. Yeah, so when we come to this point where we're triaging things inside the namespace, we're not talking about pod security admission anymore. We're talking about those settings that we discussed before where you explicitly set things so that containers can do them or not. So this is not about pod security admission, but this is something you should do because pod security admission, like we said, is not granular. When you want granularity, you need to do that yourself. You can do it manually, like we're describing here. You can use other tools like Gatekeeper and et cetera. Uh, what I just said. 
And now let's go to some practical examples. Uh, we discussed before the capabilities that we are trying to restrict or not. So Christian, what types of applications are gonna use those capabilities? Yeah, there's some workload I think every one of us requires when running stateful stuff like CSI to actually get some volumes for your pods, which requires host paths or also the privileged um, Boolean to format disk or mount disks in at your uh, nodes. There's also monitoring like the node exporter which needs to read the information from the file system or log shippers which of course needs to read the logs. And lastly, there's also the, the CNIs which for sure need um, the host network setting to do its work. Yeah, now we discussed before in theory that if you try to restrict privileges for a thing that does need privileges, uh, bad things probably will happen. Some of them are easier to find, some of them are not. So, uh, how do you identify what's wrong with your workload? So the good thing is PSA helps us with that. We can use the audit and warning modes to show or to highlight us what's wrong with our workloads if we want to in a run in a, a specific profile. Like here there's an audit log message which shows us that, that our pod violates a certain policy because we didn't set the allow privilege escalation boolean, for example. Yeah, and like we discussed before, warn mode shows you the same thing, just in a different way. So here you get a warning not on the audit log, but on your command line when you try to apply the manifest. And the cool thing here is this namespace is not yet scoped down. We can use kubectl apply, a uh, label with dry run mode to see how it would look like or if there are pods currently violating that profile if we start enforcing. Yeah, and what was, oh yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, and if you apply um, any new pods or new workload, you also get messages, for example, in kubectl or any other um, client talking to the API server. Yeah, and I, I think Christian alluded to this earlier, but a cool thing to do is you set the whole cluster to warn mode uh, when you kind of don't know what's up and just want to see everything that you need to fix. Um, and then you can start uh, applying restricted policies to specific namespaces as you fix them and adjust those settings uh, et and, and like partition things, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and to not forget if the force is with us, it blocks also pods from getting created like here, a replica set which, pot, which doesn't get created its pod because the admission get, um, yeah, blocks it from, from that. Yeah, so once you kind of got the point and you, know, you don't get a mountain of errors anymore, then you set enforce and that's actually gonna you know, just boot out. Um, it's gonna not allow things to run if they're not compliant as opposed to warn mode, which just throws a warning, but it runs anyway. Uh, and now we're back to talking about our favorite colleague. Yeah, um, so to also find out what's wrong with, with him um, or to identify that something's wrong with him, uh, we should start going into... Yeah, wait, 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 oh, wait. Sorry. No, so I just, I just wanted to highlight one thing. Uh, pod security admission has, uh, it's great in terms of showing you what's wrong, um, but it can only show you what it can see and it can't see everything because you have these applications where like for Kubernetes purposes, it looks like the whole thing is working just fine but it's not performing the function you expected it to. So you can trust PSA up to a point, but you still need to test everything if it works after you restrict it down to something like, if you, for example, take a look here, there's a pull request and we did run all necessary tests to check that everything is still working again here at cluster API. Yeah, because for some things, for Kubernetes is gonna look fine, but it's not actually gonna work. So you do need tests in place. Yeah, so if the, test part, if the tests pass, it's great, but what to do if they don't pass? Yeah, so you're gonna have two different scenarios here. So like you, you, you think you adjusted your privileges right and you got the right profile or permissions, et cetera. Uh, you ran your tests, it doesn't work. First thing you're gonna think, oh, this just needs more privileges. But that's not necessarily true because sometimes the functionality, like let's say the actual code, the thing your program does, needs less things to work than what your config thinks it needs. So it's very common to find configs that are more permissive than what the application actually needs. And that's basically, it's gonna be a very easy fix for you. So don't overlook that. For example. Yeah, for example here, upstream 
is also aware of the change or the introduction of port security admission. And there's work done, like, for example, for the cert manager to comply with the least profile possible, which is in this case restricted, by just adding the capabilities drop with the capability, capability thingy, you know? Uh, but yeah. Yeah, so as you can see here, if we don't look at the config file, if we just look at the actual thing that the thing is doing, let's say, it, did, it never needed privileges in the first place. We just had to apply privileges because we forgot to be explicit and say, this thing doesn't need privileges. Now that we said it doesn't need privileges, it complies with the security policy. So this is like a, this is a politics issue. It's not a functionality issue, so it's something to keep in mind. And like we said, this is all you needed to do to get the thing running. So it's the easy fix. What I just said. <laughs> Okay, now sometimes you're, you're trying to do this thing of removing privileges, reducing the surface area of privileges in your, in your cluster. Do we get paid for every time we say privileges? I hope not. Okay. Um, anyway, sometimes you actually need those capabilities because your application needs to work, it's gonna need the syscalls, the host access, et cetera, et cetera. So in that case, let's go back to the, what we discussed before, what can we do? Yeah, so again, we can separate the workload by namespaces to get into different profiles, and the additional thing to configure the containers and reduce the capabilities which are not needed for single containers too. Yeah, so what does this look like in practice? Let's talk about vSphere CSI controller. It has a lot of components. Christian, how do you address this? Yeah, so we have a deployment in a daemon set, and. We know that a daemon set needs to do stuff like mounting disks and formatting disks, but the deployment should be totally fine with the restricted profile. So what we can do is, because it doesn't need any privileges, we can do the namespace separation thing, configure it to run as non-root, and so on, and finally, we would be there and are secure for this deployment already. Yeah, so th there's two things to think about here. One is, how did you find that this is the case? Yeah, like, again, we did adjust, we did take a look into the code, does it need those privileges, and we did for, for sure test that it works afterwards too. And you tested with warn mode and with your own unit tests and et cetera. Yeah, exactly, so the whole thing, the thing was, must work afterwards, so. Okay, and another thing we can do, uh, when we look specifically at the part that's left here, we know this is gonna need privileges to some extent because it needs to access the hard disk, but, there's a small container which basically exposes an HTTP service to the API server which could get reached. This one doesn't need any privileges like the other two containers. So we can also scope that down and reduce the privileges of this container and by that reduce the attacking surface. Yeah, so before, when we started, let's say I just read about pod security admission for the first time today, and I'm thinking, well, this is a CSI driver, so it's gonna need privileges because it needs to read the disk. I'm just gonna set the whole thing to privilege. You could do that, uh, but that's gonna give you like this whole list of things where things can go wrong. Uh, so th there's a big surface area with privileges. Uh, what you can do instead is you break it down. This part doesn't need anything. I can just set it to restricted. Within the part that needs something, it's like, look, there's only one thing with an HTTP endpoint here, which like it's what I'm more worried about. It doesn't need any extra capability, so I'm gonna restrict this one as well. And then we go from this whole thing being privileged in a more naive approach to only precisely two little bits of it being privileged in a more, let's say, refined approach. Yeah, so there are other examples where this should work. Take a look at the Prometheus Helm chart, which is there. There's the node exporter in there, which requires the privileges, but there's a lots of other stuff like Prometheus itself or its additional uh, deployments, which should be fine with running restricted. So the same approach could be done here by separating the node exporter to a separate namespace. Yeah, itself. so we tested the CSI driver. This one we didn't, but we're just saying it's kind of the same concept. It's pr this concept's probably gonna translate to a lot of the stuff you work with. Uh, so that's uh, the general idea to keep in mind. Uh, so this is what I said. Uh, some workload requires more privileges, but not every part of that workload does. And the smaller the surface area running on privilege mode, the better. So let's talk about some guidelines. Yeah, so um, 
we have to think of PSA preemptively, and um, we should make it support us through the whole development process. So there are some guidelines to, to take for that. Yeah. So if you're transitioning a bunch of stuff that you already have into uh, working with pod security admission, uh, like we discussed before, first thing you want to do, enable warn and audit mode uh, cluster-wide so that you know everything that is not compliant with something. Uh, you're going to get those errors. You're going to see what's going on. Uh, start setting and force mode uh, on a per namespace basis as you go through configuring things individually. Uh, after you're done with that, then you can enforce cluster-wide defaults. And you should know that once you're enforcing cluster-wide defaults, that's going to be good, because you're not going to end up with regressions, because things are just not going to run. But that's going to be bad, because things are just not going to run. And sometimes you're going to forget that you set the setting. Uh, and that's going to you know, be, be problematic. But you're going to be adhering to a, to a very high uh, security standard. Yeah, so we're not only transitioning workload. We, already, we also start creating new things. So for that. Um, best would be to create a new namespace which, where we already set the enforce mode to the restricted profile which we want. So this way we can work backwards and we, when we know that this workload needs a certain privilege, we can go the, ba the way back up and um, know that, okay, it requires that we have to go to that privilege. So, um, and for sure at the, at the end have end-to-end -end tests that all works. Yeah, and for the things, like we said, the things that do need privilege, don't forget to compartmentalize. Split the namespaces in the privileged namespaces. Look at the individual pods. Go fix their settings. Don't just leave everything open up just because one part needs it. Uh, if you like to read, the internet has a lot of things to read, so you can uh, do that. And a couple more things. Yeah, in CLI, you can use Qverno, which has a CLI tool, and some pre-built um, YAMLs to apply or use Qverno as linter during your development process when you adjust some manifests and see immediately that there's something wrong, there's something misconfigured uh, to what we expect. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing that was wrong before. Uh, we set the version to latest. And so far in the, pod security, in the history of pod security admission, there have been no like big breaking changes. Uh, we're not expecting there to be. but uh, we don't know what the world's going to look like one year or two from now. If you put latest on stuff that you reviewed today, it might break down the line. So just put the setting for the version that you're currently using, that you know it works. And if you want to review it at some point in the future, then you do that deliberately. But you don't want your uh, the thing you don't want to be enforcing a policy that you don't know what it is because it just got updated and you didn't notice. That's a recipe uh, for headache. Yeah, so at the end, we applied PSA to everything. So we're secure now. I can close my epic, right? Exactly. So now that we got to the end, you applied PSA. You're enforcing a restricted profile. You are 100% secure. Uh, it's Friday afternoon now. We can go have a beer, being 100% calm. Uh, there's just a couple of things you want to look at later. Uh, but you know, it's practically done at this point. Yeah, it's for Monday. Yeah. We're not on call, right? Uh, <laughs> Okay, so thanks everybody. I hope this was helpful. We, we wanted to make this a very practical thing with practical examples, easy to understand, nothing fancy. Uh, when you are working on this in practice on your systems, we hope that this, this is gonna be helpful to review so that you kind of have a, a light based on the work we already did. Thanks everybody. Thanks.